my favorite manifestation technique that gets me the quickest results and time and time has proven to work. I wanna talk about everything. I wanna talk about the exact scripting. I wanna talk about how I get into alignment with my desire, which is the identity shift. And I wanna talk about detachment, which is such a difficult but important topic. You need a level of detachment from your desire in order for it to manifest. You need to get out of the lacking frequency. Now, how do you get out of the lacking frequency? What are tips and tricks that you can use to, on the one hand, script and calling your desires, and at the same time, detach. If you want to know how to manifest your desires quicker than ever, keep watching this video. My name is Davy. I am a PhD student in chemical engineering at the University of Cambridge. Not only that, I'm also a life coach. I've helped people one-on-one, -on -one, but now I've also launched my manifestation course. In the course, I want to help people personally in a five-week trajectory to make the identity shift, to step into a higher version of themselves. Through daily journaling, guided practices, and weekly coaching videos, I can help you do so. So go to my website or watch the video if you want to know more about the course. Now let me get into the manifesting secrets. There is so much content out there, people that are suggesting specific manifestation or scripting techniques. I've seen 336, I've seen 369, I've seen so many things. Now I wanna make a comprehensive video, boiling it down once more for you. How does scripting exactly work? so that you can choose which method is most appropriate for you and your emotions and your feelings. How do you get into alignment with your desire? Because the scripting on its own is not enough. We then need to actually know how to embody our desire, how to make the identity shift. And thirdly, I wanna talk about detachment. There needs to be a level of detachment. And there is a little secret that you can use for detaching that I'm gonna teach you in this video. So definitely make sure you stick around until the end because that's when things get good. Let's first talk about the scripting. Now, what is important about the scripting is that I first want you to get an understanding why the scripting is important. What is it meant for? What does it do in your brain? And if you decide to do just visualization instead of scripting, if that works better for you, that is fine as well. When you understand how it works, you understand what would work best for you. So why are we scripting and why are we visualizing? It is to mentally prepare ourselves for the reality of having the desire. It is to create the reality or the frequency of having our desire. Our brain works in patterns. Our brain loves to recognize things. So when we script or when we visualize, our brain thinks we've already been through that experience. It doesn't really matter for our brain if it's real or not. It's the same when we're watching a movie, our emotion system can get really invested, right? When the movie is sad, we feel sad or specific music can hit us in a certain way. It doesn't matter that it is not real or our current reality, our emotions get invested in it. And that's when we are aligning to a specific frequency. When we feel emotions, that is aligning to a specific frequency. Now, in scripting or visualizing, we are creating a desired reality, a script of something we'd like to happen. In that way, you're pre-training your brain to get into that reality. You're aligning to the frequency during the scripting or the visualizing. Now, what is really Really important in both the scripting and the visualizing is that you do it in a way as if it is happening now, as if it is happening in the present moment, or you write in the past tense as if it has already happened. So with the scripting, you always formulate it in either the present moment, it is happening now, or the past tense. What is important with the scripting is that you really create a scenario around your desire. So let's say you want to manifest a relationship, right? You really create a scenario where you are with your partner and you talk about how they speak to you, script about how that is making you feel. And all in the present moment, you could even write a love letter to them in the present moment as if you are in a relationship with them, as if it is happening. We're trying to fool our brain here. Now, for example, if you're trying to manifest money, you can script about the amount in the past tense, for example. I have made this and this amount of money this month. I am buying this and create a script around it. So talk about how you feel, talk about how you are spending your money, talk about the things that you are buying on the present moment, right? You are pretending that the desire has already come to you and creating a script around that. Now with the visualizing, 
thing. Visualizing is like daydreaming. And maybe you used to do this as a kid. I definitely remember back in the day when I was a kid, I used to daydream. So it is like pretending you are in a specific scenario. For example, want to be an entrepreneur or you want to have a specific job. You visualize yourself in that job, in the present moment, as if it is happening now. Or when you're trying to manifest a relationship, you visualize being in that relationship. Or when you're trying to visualize any other attainment, let's say for example, my PhD, right? That could be an example, or maybe another degree that you're trying to get. You are visualizing getting it. You are visualizing about having finished it. You're visualizing the day of your graduation. Or what is really important about the scripting and the visualizing, either of those can work, is that it has already happened or it is happening in that script or in that visual. And get really detailed, get really creative. Who is there in your script? Who is there in your visualization? Maybe your mom is there or your parents are there cheering you on or the person that you are trying to manifest that you're in a relationship with is there. Now, especially when it comes to relationship we don't have to give a face to this person we can just visualize a person without a face but we can visualize how we want to feel and when you script as well it's really important that you script about how it is making you feel how having the desire is now making you feel that is the essence of scripting and i get a lot of questions about how often should i script how often should i visualize and there's no limit to this, as long as it is making you feel good. As long as that daydreaming or that sort of scripting and dreaming away is invoking positive emotions in you, feelings of excitement, that is good. Now, how does the scripting then actually work? Because you've aligned to that frequency previously, after you've done the scripting or after you've done the visualization, your perception of reality will change other things will start to stand out to you. As I said, your brain works in patterns. So subconsciously, your brain is gonna try to recognize or find something that is similar to the previously felt emotion during that script or during that visualization. So the scripting and the visualizing is honestly like this magic button that you turn on in your brain after which your perception of reality afterwards will change where intuition and aligned action will come to you and other things in your reality will stand out to you. Your brain will start to subconsciously search for a situation that is resonating with that previously felt emotion because that is part of your emotional spectrum and your frequency right now. You've created that reality. If it feels good to you to script regularly, that is fine. You can do it as often as you want, but be very aware how it feels because often if we're scripting every day, we're being needy. We're probably not believing that our desire is on the way. But in some scenarios, it really depends on the desire. In some scenarios, scripting about it every day, daydreaming about it every day, just makes you feel really excited and good. And you're like, oh, that is gonna happen for me. I love to script and visualize about it. I love to tap back into that frequency of my desire that is making me feel excited. Then keep going, that is completely fine. The script is just a way to pre-program your brain. Even with visuals and scripts, your brain has the exact same activity as if you're actually going through the experience. And that is what we're trying to get at with the scripting. That is what we're trying to get at in the visualization. And that is why we do it in the present moment or in the past tense. Only then get into the feeling of like, oh, whoa, this is happening now. This is happening to me or this desire has come to me. So if you're again trying to manifest money, you're writing a full script of a day where you go shopping and you have that money and really get into that feeling. What would it feel like? to have this, right? Make a lot of feeling statements in your script. And if you're just sticking to visualization, also fine, but really get into the emotion of how it would feel to have that. How does it feel to then walk around with your desire? How does it feel to get the phone call from your relationship that you're trying to manifest? How does it feel to maybe you visualize looking at your bank statements and seeing the money come in that you're trying to manifest? Do you see the essence now? Do you get sort of the frequency that I'm trying to get at? It's like you are pretending and fooling yourself for a little bit during the scripting and the visualizing as if it is happening now or as if it has already happened. And that is when the reality is created. If you get to that feeling, the first stage of manifestation is completed. If you've gotten to the excited feeling of knowing what it would feel like to have the desire during your script or visual, that is when you have tapped into the frequency. That is when the reality of you having the desire exists and is created. There's no other way. 
if you feel the emotions that reality exists so rest in that knowledge have peace in that knowledge i can promise that to you right now that reality exists where you have to desire this is also a good measure of knowing how far away you are from manifesting if you're scripting and you can't even get into the feeling into the emotion you can't picture yourself actually having that that is when you're not in alignment with your desire so maybe change the script maybe change what you're trying to manifest make it a little bit smaller or try to reformulate your script in a way where you generalize it a little bit or maybe go a little bit more specific where you do get a feeling of excitement and positivity whatever we feel like during the scripting is what we manifest and if our scripting is just making us feel like oh surely not and we feel lack that is what we're manifesting we're manifesting more lack so really use your emotions to guide you on am i scripting in the right way and all of these questions that i get in my comments about should i do this should i use this color pen in my scripting should i do that my answer to that will always be what feels good to you but secondly we need to talk about getting into alignment with your desire so outside of the scripting and visualizing during daily life it is really important that you get into alignment with your desire what does this mean this means that you start to identify as a person that has the desire. And this takes a little bit of time. This is often where the sort of slow burn of manifestation or the delay comes in because sometimes we're successful in scripting and visualizing, but we're not so good in getting into alignment, taking on the identity, which is basically about walking around in your daily life, thinking you already have your desire. And what is really important in this getting into alignment is catching your story. Catching whenever you say I am or I have or the words that you speak during the day to your friends or to your colleagues. What do you introduce yourself as? Let's say you're trying to manifest wanting to be an entrepreneur, but you keep introducing yourself with your old job and your old identity. You're not getting into alignment. And that may, this might feel a little bit weird where you have to lie to people. You need to start to introduce yourself as your new identity. You need to speak the words that align with your new identity. So if you're trying to manifest money, you don't talk about how broke you are during the day. You don't complain to your friends, oh, I have no money, I am so broke. You don't speak about that anymore because that is not the identity that you want to have. This is again related to delusion, right? We are creating a new identity and we need to speak about it as if it has already happened, even though there is no physical proof of it yet in our reality. The, and this is the weird part. This is the part where people struggle with because you need to pretend something has happened. You need to start to speak about something as if it has already happened. Money or a relationship or any other desires, we only speak about the identity of having it. And if that feels too far, if that feels like a lie, you don't want to sort of lie to people in that way, make sure that you refrain from talking about the opposite. So refrain from talking about how you don't have a relationship or how you're single. Don't speak about that anymore. That reality is, is yeah, that is your present moment right now, but we don't want to keep affirming our present moment. We don't want to keep affirming our present moment, lack of our desire. So we need to stop talking about the lack of our desire and we need to speak our desire into existence. Taking on the identities also, for example, when you look at other people that have manifested your desire, do you feel equal to them or do you look up to them like, oh my God, wow, how have they done that? If you were to take on the identity, if you were to get into alignment with your desire, you would look at other people that have your desire and think, oh yeah, that's gonna be me soon because I've created a reality in my head. So I know that will be me eventually. Do you see this weird delusion where you almost ignore your present moment and pretend it has already happened and get yourself into alignment? Now, if you are properly getting yourself into alignment and you're taking on the identity of already having it, for example, let's say you want to be an entrepreneur, you could buy an outfit that makes you feel that way, for example. And then you walk around during the day in the street or maybe in a supermarket and you pretend you are that for a day. Like you walk around and you're like, well, today I'm an entrepreneur. These people don't know. Like, and this is just in your head, right? And this you can do for any of your desires. Walk around and think you already have it. Maybe you need some changes in your physical appearance to get to that frequency. Maybe you need to make some changes in your surrounding to get to that frequency. Whatever you need to embody the identity of having your desire. And the beauty of this is that aligned action will follow. When you are able to take on the identity, you will think of what to do. 
manifestation is not on the one hand is magical because we create scripts and they actually happen on the other hand it is not so magical because we are actually the ones that are going to take action we are actually the ones that are manifesting we are getting shit done if we want to be a millionaire we are going to be the ones that are putting in the work to get there but if we take on the identity first of already being that aligned action follows naturally because you feel worthy of that desire you already identify with being a millionaire you already identify with being whatever you're trying to be so the action follows naturally that is the beauty of our brain of our little software program within us if we believe in something or if we already identify with something the actions follow naturally do whatever it takes to trick your brain to even for a second think it has already happened do whatever physical thing you can do in your uh, environment in this physical 3d reality that can make you feel like you've embodied the desire now thirdly and this is at the same time as you're aligning right this is not per, per se sequential but we also need to detach how do we detach very simple we stop focusing on our present moment 3d reality we completely ignore our present moment 3d reality which is the lack of our desire so for example when we are trying to manifest money we stop looking at our current bank statement which is the lack of money which is making us feel the lacking frequency when we're trying to manifest a relationship we stop focusing on the fact that we don't have a relationship right now or we talk about how lonely we are or we think about how we are not in a relationship right now. If we're trying to manifest a degree, we don't give any attention to the fact that we lack the degree right now. It is about not focusing any attention anymore on the lack of your desire. And whenever you feel yourself gravitate towards that or look at your bank statement and feel frustrated again, that you poor, that go back to the delusion, go back to the daydreaming, go back to the visualizing, go back to the scripting. Now, another sort of contradictory part of detachment is that if we live too much from our future scenario, so if we keep sort of craving it and desiring it and fantasizing about it, we can also still be in a lacking frequency. This is a very slippery slope. And the key here is the emotion. If thinking about your desire is making you feel like, oh, when is it gonna happen? How is it gonna happen? Why is it not here yet? You are in a lacking frequency. In that case, you need to sort of let go of it for a little bit and focus on something else. And this is very contradicting. So uh, sorry if this is confusing, but on the one hand, we visualize and we daydream about the end result and we daydream about the identity of having it. But at the same time, we don't keep focusing on the end result and we don't keep saying, okay, why is it not here yet instead we focus on the journey we focus on the now we make sure that our present moment vibration is also enjoying the journey towards our desires you see this a lot in very successful business people they don't keep focusing on they like say for example a starting off entrepreneur and their goal is to make 30k a month or something like that they don't keep focusing on, oh, when is the 30K here? Okay, did I already make 30K? No, no, instead they just sort of, that is what I put out there. I want to make 30K this month, but now I'm just focusing on my work. What can I do in the present moment to get there? How can I enjoy the journey towards? And at the same time in the detachment, we don't give any attention to the lack of our desire. So we don't keep checking our bank statements or we don't keep checking whatever reminds us of the fact that we don't have our desire yet, right? So that is the energy of detachment. On the one hand, we ignore the present moment reality. We ignore the lack of our desire. We don't give any attention to anything that makes us feel like, oh, I feel so alone right now, or oh, my desire is not here yet. We don't give any attention to that. Just simply ignore it, doesn't exist. Current bank statement doesn't exist. Lack of the relationship, feeling lonely doesn't exist. Secondly, we can script and daydream. That is making us feel good, but we are also not hyper-focused on when is it gonna happen, right? When we focus only on the end result, it's like, oh, when is it here? When am I gonna make that money? When is, am I gonna meet the love of my life? When is it gonna happen? That is the hyper-focusing on the future. Instead, we just focus on the journey. Now, we go back to the present moment and we think, okay, what can we do in the present moment to work towards it? What are some actions that I can take? What are some things that I can do to make myself feel better? 
better, to increase my vibration, to get into alignment with my desire, ignoring the lack of our desire in our present moment, not keep wondering when our desire is going to come and how our desire is going to come, instead focusing our present moment energy on the journey and on the joy towards. And a very good technique that can be used to detach a little bit is gratefulness, by just being grateful for what you already have, being grateful for what you already have achieved. Any visual that you can have in your mind is a future reality that could exist and when you get to that belief and feeling, it doesn't truly matter what is happening in your 3D reality right now because you know things can always change and evolve. Maybe right now in my current 3D reality, it isn't here yet, but I'm ignoring that. And if it feels good to you, then go back to the scripting or go back to visualizing. So that is true detachment. Detachment is enjoying the journey, being grateful for what you already have, ignoring the lack of your desire in your current 3D reality and going back to anything that makes you feel good and maybe just going back to taking on the identity, aligning, pretending it is already here, maybe go back to visualizing and scripting, or if the scripting and the visualizing is just making you feel needy again, or invoking that feeling of lack, going back to other practices that are making you feel more high vibrational, maybe it is meditation, maybe it is yoga, too much desiring can lead to lack. And that's when we're not detached because then we're like, when is it gonna happen? It needs to happen now. If you want my personal guidance on manifesting your desire, I've launched a manifestation course, which is the ultimate self-development course where I'm really taking you step by step in a five week trajectory towards making this identity shift. We're working on all facets of self-development. So we're gonna work on your self-concept. How do you view yourself? How do you view others? We're going to work on your ego and your triggers and your past trauma, which are the lower vibrational frequencies that you're still carrying with you, which are weighing you down and holding you back from manifesting your desires. I'm going to teach you exactly how to embody the identity of having your desire. And then finally, we're making this identity shift into this higher future version of you. And you get my daily guidance in doing so. There's daily practices, guided practices, there's daily journaling, and there are weekly coaching or teaching videos. In the course, you also get my personal guidance. You get to ask me personal questions through chat or through voice memos. And I'm gonna help you through this identity shift. And the course is five weeks because it's the minimum amount of time I need to make actual changes in who you are, because that is the aim of the course. You're going to be a different person after that. It's going to change you on a very fundamental basis and it's going to help you shift into the highest version of yourself. If you want to know more about the course, go to my website or watch this video over here on where I explain more about the course. And I would love to have you on my course. If you made it up until here, you are a true one. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for being here. Give me a like if this video was useful, subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram, which is Davy lower dash Citram. And I would love to see you in my next video. Sending you my love.